Hey everyone, today we're going to look at some sponges and erasers sent to us by Preservation Equipment. Now this is all conservation grade stuff that is sold by conservation suppliers and uh, we're just going to have a closer look at what they are. We're going to start with this. This is called a sponge eraser on PAL's website. And uh, basically it's a really lightweight foam sponge. It weighs almost nothing, it really is feather light in your hands. It's kind of a household thing really. I actually know this from a domestic setting in that I use these at home, um, mostly for things like uh, grimy kitchen surfaces and that sort of thing. They require water to work, so really this is one of those sponges that you'd have to be really selective with what you can use them on. Each sponge is about 12 by 6.5 by 2.5 centimeters, so you do get quite a decent one, and these, comes in pack, and these come in packs of 5. Each pack is 4.75, so they're actually pretty economical. Uh, you can cut them into smaller chunks if you want, um, and yeah. Personally, I would definitely recommend these for things like your lab sink, that sort of thing. Uh, maybe cleaning your glassware if there's uh, adhesive residue, if you find paint stains and other gunk in your sink, that is definitely what I would do. I don't know what I would use it for in terms of object conservation, because I just haven't tried it. Um, it does require moisture to work, so it's one of those tricky ones. Once you've used it for a little bit, it actually looks uh, more like this. Um, this is uh, a sponge that I got off the internet, not from Pell, so it is a little bit smaller. Um, but they were also cheaper. Um, basically, they start disintegrating over time. They do, as you can see, really absorb dirt really well. So they do work a treat, actually. Um, I don't know if you listened to the podcast episode where we talked about these, but uh, Chloe said IKEA used them a lot to get scuff marks out of furniture and walls and stuff like that. So very much I've used these domestically. But for your lab sink and that sort of thing, I definitely think they're well worth a go. If anyone has used them for conservation purposes, let me know, I'd love to hear from you. Next up we've got these. Uh, these are essentially um, what I used to know as wish ab sponges. These are now called Acapad. Uh, we've got two of them here and uh, I'll talk you through each one of them. They have the same grippy blue part which is a really coarse thing that you just kind of hold on to. This one is the uh, Acapad Classic Sponge um, and in the episode we actually talk about this as a more of a wholemeal kind of sponge because it has this interesting kind of texture to it. It does look rougher and more coarse um, and that is exactly what it is. This one's quite firm as well. It is actually called the extra hard sponge. It comes in a variety of different softnesses and that sort of thing and each one is good for a different thing. Uh, this one costs £6.25 um, and I don't, still don't know if it's meant to be broken apart or if it's just meant to have these sections. Um, if someone can enlighten me, I'd really love to know, because I'm not a regular user of these. The extra hard one uh, is essentially recommended for non-sensitive rough surfaces, so things like walls and masonry, um, wallpaper, that sort of thing. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any of those things to clean. <laughs> You'd think I would have been able to find a brick or something, but unsurprisingly there aren't that many bricks lying around my house. Um, but basically, if I do find something to try this on, I will let you know. This, meanwhile, is the um, Acapad Sensitive White Sponge. Um, as you can see, I have actually tried this one. Um, it does pick up dirt very well. This one is slightly more, almost like a soft cheese. It's very soft, it still has the grippy uh, blue bit on top. Um, this one costs 6 70 uh, This is actually recommended for cleaning documents, so very much a, a kind of uh, historic maps, that sort of thing. Um, 
Now, because I don't have anything like that in my house, I prepared some paper we can try it on. Now, I tried this with a couple of different papers. Uh, this is basically graphite dust, and uh, this is soil, basically, from my garden. So I thought we would just try this uh, and see how much of it comes off. I'll try the other side, actually, so we get a better idea. Now, I'm not necessarily cleaning this out the way I would an object or a historic document. I'm just trying to get a feel for the sponge and see what kind of motion I think works best. Well, that does pick up a fair bit of dirt, actually. It doesn't do all that much to the kind of soiled areas, but it does pick up the other um, more dusty dirt really, really well. Um, it does fall apart, and that's kind of the whole point, because this is supposed to come apart as a kind of a dry cleaning powder. So you are going to get stuff that you need to kind of brush off, hoover off, that sort of thing, which may or may not be the sort of thing that you're looking for. The same is true for the coarser pad, uh, because I did have a try of it uh, with some um, the grouting between some kitchen tiles, um, and mostly it didn't really take anything off. I think it was too well ingrained. And, uh, but it, it did come apart a little bit, you know, so this stuff uh, does fall apart. That's what it's meant to do. So as it picks up dirt, it's going to come, it's going to come off. Next up, we've got one of my personal favorites. Uh, this is smoke sponge. Uh, smoke sponge is very much a staple in my life as an object conservator. I love this stuff. Uh, this is the small version. They also do a larger one, which is more of a brick, really, um, that I then cut into smaller pieces. So that's what I'm used to. Uh, at the time of recording, the small ones cost one ninety five each, and the larger blocks two ninety five each. It does have more of a rough surface than the um, Acapad I just used. So there are certainly things I wouldn't use it on because I'd be concerned about the surface texture but overall this is a real workhorse in my lab. Normally I cut a bit off so actually this would have been about this size um, but yeah so I normally cut this off into little sections so it's easier to work with. That way it also gives you more surface area to work with. So I'm going to try this out on uh, some cork here, which I've, uh, this is the control area. This is uh, graphite dust, soil from the kitchen garden and some flour, just to give you an idea. Again, I'm going to go at this quite roughly, not the way I would with an object. Well, I would say that you quite quickly see quite a noticeable difference there. Um, so yeah, uh, and it does pick up the dirt quite well. But yeah, this doesn't leave any little bits usually. Um, so if it does, it's mostly because you cut it in a weird way or something. But So this requires kind of minimal cleanup afterwards, which is a really nice thing when you're working somewhere, you know, out in the field and such. Um, so for me, uh, smoke sponge is always a really good thing to have. Now these are made out of natural rubber. And obviously that might be uh, an issue for some people. Um, they do a synthetic one as well, which I haven't tried. Um, I think Chloe said she found it a little bit coarser, but um, basically I can speak from experience on that one. so. Uh, leave a comment if you have used the synthetic version. Next up we've got the coarse eraser bar. Uh, now this actually came to us in a little bag because bits come off it as soon as you touch it. It really is a coarse material and it is kind of crumbling in your hands. So this is definitely a messy one if you see what I mean. Um, when I handled it earlier without gloves, it was everywhere on my hands. That's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just something to be aware of. Now the coarse eraser bar, um, 
is marked as something that can remove ink, uh, stains, uh, really stubborn surface dirt. They do caution that it isn't advisable to use with everything, which, you know, is sensible. Um, it does also say that it works the same as suede leather cleaner. I'm, I don't know really what that means, and I didn't have anything leather to try this on, unfortunately. However, I uh, thought I would try it again on the cork. This is quite dense as well, it's really heavy in your hands. Um, each of these bars cost uh, $2.95 at the time of recording, and you can get a pack of 10 for uh, $23.60. So if it's something that you need in bulk, then you can get them a bit cheaper. Right, let's have a go. Oh gosh. Hey, that does actually work. That is no joke, that takes the dirt right off. Really quickly and easily as well. As you can see that it does stain that corner a little bit. And yeah, you do have stuff everywhere. But that has cleaned up remarkably well. And quickly too. So if, I suppose if you have a surface that can really handle it, that's actually a really nice quick alternative. Not one I'd previously considered. I think partially because course is in the name, I, I think it, that would have made it feel a bit off-putting for me, but it is true to the name, and you know what, that's surprisingly efficient. Cool. Next up is the Rub Gum Eraser. Now this dainty little thing uh, doubles as a non-abrasive eraser and a dry cleaning bar. Um, this comes in huge packs of 12. I mean, I say huge, you're probably gonna need them, right? Uh, but they come in packs of 12 uh, and uh, they're only 3.95, so very, very economical. Now I'm gonna take out my test paper again and uh, see if this does the trick, basically. Yeah, it does a, a really good job. It's actually a lot cleaner than the other things that I've tried. You can kind of see a, a vague outline there. So yeah, actually that, that does work. It did a little bit to the soiling, but you know, it definitely took this off, no problem. Uh, for funsies, I'm gonna try this on two other papers that I've prepared because they're slightly different. This is a really coarse paper with a slight texture. I've also got a finer textured paper and a really thin Japanese one. Ah, uh, this is the other textured paper I was talking about, so I think I'm gonna do this side. Again, I'm probably a lot less concerned with this sort of thing, which is my own paper that I myself messed up. Um, you know, I, I would handle a historical document with a lot more care. But hey, yeah, see, I wouldn't do that to begin with. But yeah, that, that does take it off really well. Um, and yeah, it, it does lighten up the soiling a little bit there. Let's try it on Japanese one. Now this is really thin paper, so um, yeah, I, I am a little bit worried about it. Yeah, I might not use it on that because that is a bit thin and I feel like it's about to tear. But I have to say though, you know, as far as gum, as far as um, erasers go, that's not bad. Um, yeah, obviously it leaves all the stuff after that erasers do, but that's to be expected. Uh, and yeah, it does the job, doesn't it? Next up we've got something very similar. This is uh, their foam eraser. Uh, this is the one that we in the show marvel about how smooth it is. The feeling to this is amazing. It does seem to leave a very fine 
coating on your fingers. So I think it's just very soft, small particles coming off it as you're touching it. I feel like this could possibly make it onto a fidget spinner. Just, ah, uh, smooth. So nice. Anyway, um, this is apparently suitable for even the thinnest papers. Um, it's very much aimed at paper conservators. So may or may not have any use if you're an object conservator like me. On the other hand, we have labels and stuff like that that we certainly need to clean up. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give it a go on those papers again. say it does anything at all to the soiling but it certainly does clean up the dust uh, which, which is what you'd expect from something like this really and on a slightly thinner paper it does work noticeably better on a thinner paper it's really interesting actually. It is different from the rub gum that I just tried. This does seem more gentle. Yeah. Let's try that on the really thin Japanese paper that made me a bit nervous earlier. Try somewhere in here. using it on this. I'm I'm still worried about it but it does do a better job than the rub gum actually. I think it's, it doesn't have the same grippiness. The rub gum is a little grippier so it kind of hangs on to the paper a bit more. So this doesn't which is presumably because you get this wonderful effect where it starts coming off on your fingers. So um, yeah actually I think this would work a treat on really fragile papers. Um, do leave a comment uh, if you use this regularly. I'd, I'd love to hear. Oh yes, and by the way, uh, a pack of 10 of these is $8.95. So they are a bit more on the pricey end, but um, even so, they do seem to work a treat. Next up, we've got the uh, document cleaning pads that Pell sells. Um, now, this is uh, the brand Arc Care, and uh, yeah, <laughs> we tried to describe this on the show, but they are a little bit odd to describe. They are just little soft sacks filled with a kind of cleaning powder, and uh, yeah, basically, I have actually used these quite a lot, actually, so um, I'll, give, I'll give them a go on the paper, but I already know these work a treat, actually. Um, it's more of a broad strokes. Uh, kind of cleaning job for these. Uh, they do work, yeah, on, you know, paper stuff. So if I have a large print in that just needs a kind of a surface clean and it's, it is definitely really stable, this is definitely something that I do. Um, basically you can rejuvenate it by working, working it a bit and then um, the cleaning powder starts coming out, coming out through the, the fine holes in the fabric. And it's kind of therapeutic, really. Um, we did have this thought on the show that it does say that these never need to be washed and they are endlessly reusable. And I don't know if I think that's true because they do pick up dirt. Um, I mean, the fabric does get dirty. So I don't know if there's any trans, if there's, if it ever transfers onto an object. Um, so I'd be curious to hear people's thoughts on that. And that these are very soft. I wouldn't use it on anything that isn't paper or a really smooth surface because I feel like something would snag and get caught on the fabric. It is very smooth fabric, but like I probably wouldn't use it on, you know, a wooden object or anything like that. Um, as you might expect, because it's full of cleaning powder, you get um, stuff everywhere from this. So this is very much one of those things that you need to uh, brush off and hoover up afterwards. 
just for uh, for fun, I actually brought in uh, one that I've used at work just to show you how dirty they can get. I mean, mine isn't horrendous or anything. It's okay, an older version because mine has different stitching. But yeah, this has been used a fair bit for l probably longer than I've been there, to be honest. And uh, you do see that it is a bit dirty, but not massively, considering how much it's cleaned. Uh, this has certainly cleaned many, many books and documents, because where I work we have an archive, and things can sometimes come in in a really filthy state. Um, so sometimes I will equip volunteers with these and instruct them how to use them. So yeah, this one has seen a fair bit of use, but it's not that dirty. Um, that being said, I would have a good think about how long you can and should use them for. Um, the powder they contain is, you know, soft and grit free, so it's very gentle. Um, and each one of these uh, costs uh, two ninety five currently. And you know, what? I think they're well worth it because they are actually really good to have. Just for, yeah, they're actually really handy. Um, but I say that because I do get in large, large documents or prints, that sort of thing, without that being my speciality. So I like having these around as an objects conservator who is basically a little bit attached to an archive. So, you know, your mileage may vary, but I quite like having one of these in one of my drawers, basically. So yeah, this one's going back to work. Alright, and our last contender for this video is this. This is a crepe eraser. It's used for adhesive removal, and um, honestly I've never seen one before Pal sent me this sample. Uh, they are 2 15 each, uh, and they are basically um, 5 cm square. That's what you get. They are apparently praised by paper conservators, and Annoyingly, I haven't been able to try it because I haven't been able to find anything with weird sticky residue like adhesive stuff on it Which is you know an annoying problem um, I did try it on like a glass jar that had a label coming off But it turns out glass is not a good substrate to try this on because it just kind of rubbed it out But if the substrate isn't glass then you know you might be all right, and I'm sure it is effective It did seem to grip on to the kind of um, adhesive that was on the jar, it just didn't really remove it. So if you use these regularly, let me know. I would love to see what a before and after looks like or shoot a little video, you know, anything. I'd really love to see. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think of these because, you know, I'm desperate to know basically. But yes, that is everything for us. Um, thanks very much for watching this. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, then, you know, please leave a comment below. Uh, and do tune in to the podcast if you're not already a listener. You can find us on the theseaword.show. Uh, and yeah, we'd love to have you as a listener. Thanks very much. Bye.